Hi, welcome to lesson 5.1, Introduction to the Evolution of Human Skin Pigmentation. The question we are pursuing is how can we explain the patterns of human skin pigmentation seen around the world using what we know about evolution. My name is Laura McGinty, high school biology teacher at Ballard High School. Good to see you again and glad to have you back. As you know, we have a process on how to use the videos and the PowerPoints. Work at your own pace because your health and your family come first above all else. Whenever it's possible, look, uh, look at your peers for support. Work with them through these activities. Uh, you might find it helpful to have something with which to take notes. Use note paper, scrap paper, digital notes, whatever it is that works best for you. Uh, if you are using the PowerPoint, go through one slide at a time. Take your time to explore the images, look at the links. Uh, if you're using the video, pause, rewind as often as necessary. If in your process you do come across something that you don't understand, make a note of the timestamp or the slide that it's on. Go through the entirety of it, and if you're still confused about it, email your teacher with a question, uh, talk to somebody in your household, talk to a friend, uh, just make sure that you're processing it through. Finally, when you are finished, uh, think about sharing what you've learned with somebody uh, explaining your thinking is a very powerful learning tool. It helps you retain the information and really make sense of the information as you are uh, going through this academic journey. There are four goals associated with this particular lesson. Um, the first goal is to identify several things that you notice from a video and questions that you have about evolution of skin um, pigmentation. The second goal is to describe how pigment molecules are produced in the skin. The third is to understand why folate and vitamin D are important. And then five, uh, five, let's try four. <laughs> four is to describe how skin pigmentation is related to the levels of UV light in a region. So here's where our paths diverge, uh, or uh, you actually have a choice right now. Um, in the PowerPoint, there is a link to the video, Biology of Skin Pigmentation. This is from HHMI. It's about an 18 to 19 minute video. So you can pause and go watch this video and then come back and resume uh, and go through the remainder of the notes. Or you can go through the remainder of the notes uh, and then watch the, uh, this video at the end uh, in conjunction with the information that you learn from here. Uh, or combined with. So your choice, do what you need to do. Uh, no wrong answer there. While you're working on the remainder of the notes, there are five questions that you're going to find on the evolution of human skin pigmentation worksheet. Uh, so now is a good opportunity to either make sure that you have the worksheet with you, you can do digital version, print it out, uh, or jot these questions down, whatever works best. The first question is, what is melanin? So we'll address that. The second question is, why are folate and vitamin D important? Uh, and what do they do for your body and uh, developing baby? The third question is, how would light skin color balance the needs for vitamin D and folate? The fourth question is, how would dark skin balance the needs for vitamin D and folate? The final and fifth question is in what type of environment would you expect to find darker skin versus lighter skin? So we'll talk about the melanin first. So melanin is a pigment molecule that influences skin color. Melanocytes are a type of cell found in the epidermis, which is a surface skin cell. Uh, it's the outermost, the things that you can touch. So these melanocytes uh, make the pigment melanin and they deposit it into the cells in the skin. The person's skin color is going to depend on the amount and types of melanin that uh, they have and uh, how much is produced. Sunlight can also temporarily change the amount the, of melanin that a person has because melanin, uh, one of the things that it does is it protects the DNA um, from, uh, from the harmful effects of UV rays. Now, when you look at this particular graphic here, you'll notice a, um, a macro scale uh, cross cut of skin. So we see our first layer, which is the epidermis. We learned that that is where the melanocytes are. 
Below the epidermis is something called the dermis, and then beneath that is the fatty tissue. You can see where the follicles for hair are, oil glands, uh, sweat glands. You can see a reference here to blood vessels and melanocytes here. You can see those pointed there. And then we have this little box that does a zoom out. We've used zoom outs to change the scale. So now we're looking at a cellular level here. Uh, in the cellular level, uh, we're gonna zoom in even further because now we see melanin that is produced by these mel uh, melanocytes. So that's a breakdown of what melanin is. Now we're gonna talk about folate. So folate is also known as vitamin B9. You can find it in a lot of foods. Uh, such as beans, citrus uh, fruits, dark green leafy vegetables like kale, collard greens, uh, spinach, etc. Whole grains, uh, poultry, pork, shellfish, and liver. Uh, it is really critical during the process of mitosis or rapid cell division. Uh, this is going to occur during like, embryonic and fetal development. And what we do know is that UV light destroys the body's folate stores. Looking at the graphic below, you can see that intense UV light destroys the stored folate. Uh, so people with light skin are more fo uh, vulnerable to folate destruction. When you have a deficiency in folate, or when a person has a deficiency in folate, uh, there could be a low sperm count because folate is necessary for sperm to develop normally. In utero, uh, with embryonic and fetal development, it could lead to uh, a deficiency in folate, could lead to spina bifida, which is when the spinal column does not fully close around the spinal cord uh, before birth occurs, which can lead to um, uh, a birth defect where the spinal cord is exposed. And then we also have uh, anencephaly, which is when the brain and the skull do not develop properly. There's a severe underdevelopment and this is always a fatal condition. To address vitamin D, uh, vitamin D is produced in skin exposed to UV light. Sometimes people use the phrase that they're gonna go soak up some vitamin D uh, when they go out into the sun. And that's not to say that there is vitamin D in sunlight, that is not the case. What is the case is that when that exposure to the UV light occurs, it, uh, it, it helps a chemical process or a chemical change occur where it changes from one chemical uh, to produce then vitamin D. The other source of vitamin D that we have is through our diet. So vitamin D can come from uh, fortified foods such as milk and cereals. Fortified just means that it's been added in. There's also fish, cheese, and butter are other sources of vitamin D. So when we have a sufficient amount of vitamin D, this permits uh, the absorption of calcium and phosphate in the small intestines. And this is really important for bone mineralization. So when they talk about vitamin D is good for your bones, that's what they're talking about. There are a lot of other tasks that calcium and, vitamin, or calcium and phosphate are important for, uh, but bone mineralization is a really hugely important one. When you have um, uh, vitamin D, production in skin exposed to UV light, persons with darker skin are more vulnerable to an insufficient vitamin D production. Now, what happens to a vitamin D deficiency? There is a risk for pregnancy. Uh, if there's a vitamin D uh, deficiency in a pregnant woman, there are risks of preeclampsia, which is elevated blood pressure, uh, as well as reduced bone density in the pelvis. Um, for children, we're looking at potentially premature birth, rickets, which is an abnormal bone formation due to calcium deficiency, and then there's also the risk of uh, multiple sclerosis. So again, vitamin D is produced uh, as a result of exposure to UV, uh, UV light. When we look at this particular graphic, we can see um, that there's patterns here. So let's break down what's happening. We have two people, Nina Jablonski and George Chaplin, who use NASA satellites to measure UVB intensity. UVB is a type of UV radiation. It has a shorter wavelength and it's the one that's responsible for sunburns. Um, so they wanted to measure UVB intensity to see if there's a balance between the amount of skin pigmentation to block harmful UV rays, but still provide enough 
uh, to do sufficient vitamin D synthesis uh, or make that vitamin D in the, in the body. And what they found is that their predictions actually closely match the actual skin variations around the world. Looking at this, we can see, our, look at our equatorial regions on our map here. Uh, you can see that there is uh, darker skin pigmentation in the areas where there is the highest amount of UB, uh, UVB radiation or UVB light. Uh, and as you proceed northward and southward from there, uh, the, there's less and less skin pigmentation because there is less and less UVB radiation, but there's still enough present to be able to um, produce vitamin D in the body. Now we move to the evolution of skin color. Human skin color is a great example of natural selection. So we have varying levels of light, uh, UV light, which has selected for a range of tones, uh, which we can see for around the globe. And uh, in each case, we can see here the amount of melanin represents a compromise. Uh, that compromise is between folate and vitamin D. We need enough melanin to be able to protect the folate, uh, but we still need to be able to make vitamin D for our body. So when we start in Africa, the origins uh, here, we can see that we have high, high levels of UV light. Individuals with dark skin, so high, um, high amounts of skin pigmentation, were able to reproduce more successfully because there's more melanin, as you see here, that protects the folate from the damage caused by UV light. But uh, there was still enough UV light to be able to produce a sufficient amount of vitamin D uh, to be healthy and survive. As, uh, as we migrated out of Africa and into the Eurasian continent, you can see that there's less and less UV exposure. Uh, so the lower melanin levels enabled sufficient vitamin D levels to be able to be produced, but the folate wasn't destroyed because there was less UV light. So this means that individuals with light skin were able to reproduce more successfully. Migrating outward from there to the Americas uh, and southward through the Indonesian islands and into Australia, um, and even down into New Zealand, Tasmania, etc. You can see that the skin pigmentation is uh, increasing as you move further southward and then uh, to the equatorial regions and then lightening again as you move further and further south. Talking about the high UV light environment again, again, individuals with dark skin pigmentation produce, reproduced more successfully because again, Melanin protects folate stores from high levels of UV light, um, but the amount of UV light was still enough for, uh, for people to be able to produce a sufficient amount of vitamin D. So again, it's that balance between UV light, folate protection, and vitamin D production. So checking our understanding here, when you watch the video, you uh, jotted down several notices as well as several questions that you had about evolution of human skin pigmentation. You described how pigment molecules are produced in the skin. You have looked at why folate and vitamin D are important. And you've described how skin pigmentation is related to levels of UV light in a region. Your next steps are to finish the worksheet if you haven't already done so. Uh, and then we're going to move to lesson 5.2 where we're going to use the evolution tool uh, to explain the evolution of human skin pigmentation. Thank you so much for your time and all of your hard work, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.